excited to be here. Um, being a part of the Bogleheads uh, meetings are a great pleasure for me, um, mostly um, really because, you know, it, it actually, you know, kind of started out or it, it actually kind of happened by mistake earlier this year <clears throat> when when I asked, when I got a call on a Friday night that um, that Taylor and, and the group in South Miami, they needed someone to come speak. And I was actually one of the only persons registered in, uh, in Vanguard to uh, in Florida to be able to speak about our product. So I went down, we had a great uh, engagement and it was, it was really, really, really exciting time. So since that time, um, I've been able to interact with probably four other chapters and, uh, and actually scheduled for about uh, four more next year, just covering broad topics uh, and giving some kind of general education, if you will, as we kind of go through, go through several kind of topics, which you think is pretty important. Um, that being said, uh, today we're actually going to talk a little bit about international in, in investing and, uh, you know, some of the thoughts and views for Vanguard uh, and, and maybe a, a good way to kind of start this out, I think, um, would be to, to tell you a little bit about my experiences leaving the U.S. to go to, uh, to Asia to actually work at HSBC. And a couple of things really popped out to me when I, when I made the trip. And Typically, when we're on like these executive kind of uh, trips, you have a go look seat. So that's an idea of you going, taking a look, understanding the surroundings, all those different things, and then you make the permanent move. Well, uh, my wife being uh, in, in, in her family being in the military, um, she actually graduated um, um, high school in Okinawa. And uh, she said, nope, we're just going to go dive right in. And um, we took a, a, a night flight, arrived in, in Hong Kong, and it was such an amazing thing because it was a city in the midst of hills, in the midst of things that were so dynamic. And um, I get to my apartment and I really couldn't understand a lot of things. One was I was larger than the refrigerator. The stove was half the size of a regular stove. The bed was literally right at my kneecap level when I'm used to a bed being more closer to the hip level. Um, all of these different things really taught me something pretty in, in important about um, international life and international investing, if you will. And the one thing is that some things just may not look the same, but they do provide some very similar functions. They do provide some very some things that you can identify and connect with. So. As I was had had to be kind of pushed into it, I would ask you, let's be open in this exploration as we talk about international investing. Um, Manish, you're, you're, you're good to go? Yep. Okay, Sounds great. Good. So one thing that I, when we get started, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you, you all actually have seen um, Bogleheads Guide, but there's three investments that they recommend, the three fund portfolio, and believe it or not, one is international. And that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit here, okay? So let's move forward. Um, so when you think about more broadly and, and when we look at you know, just, just general statistics, uh, a, a few things that I wanted to set a little bit of context around, and that has to do with um, just general GDP, especially when you look at pre-COVID versus currently in the midst of COVID and what we might be looking at, you know, going forward. And the one thing that I do want you to note is a, a few things on this particular slide. When you see this first line where it says VMO, that's Vanguard Economic Market and Outlook. And this, these numbers around GDP or annualized GDP for 2020 was originally set in December or November, December of 2019. So this was our original estimations. Then since then, we have what we call our base case given the recent updates in, um, in, 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 in COVID and in markets and in the corrections. And what we try to do at Vanguard is we don't try to pinpoint an economic prediction, but we like to give what we call this um, base case upside and downside, a bit of a probability range. But from an economic perspective, what you need to know and what I really like to want to really want to point out here is that look at the variation between countries. And this is an important, important point around just general diversification. And what we believe Vanguard looking on a 10 year outlook is that China is essentially going to outperform. 
all other countries, and even if you look at base case, you look at upside, downside, there is there's various diversification that you can see and performance outcomes across the board and across the world. So this is a global context that Vanguard really likes to set out and give a, a, a real clear kind of picture around like, what are we dealing with? What are some of the outlooks? And why does international make a little bit of sense? Why does it start making sense? Is that all economies are not the same, okay? Here, so when we start looking at going forward, if we have, if on the previous slide, you look at um, GDP for the year and estimates, the, the idea is that most regions will have this V type shape correction. But this, this slide here actually depicts something very interesting and something very different is like, when, when does the, how does the recovery happen and how persistent is the recovery? recovery? Because when you start looking at trajectory, some of the trajectories actually take, it's gonna take up to 2022, 2023 to actually close in the gap between what was pre-COVID and what was post-COVID. The interesting point here to note again is that essentially in Asia, China is essentially going to have, be back on track with their trajectory of GDP almost at by the end of the year, if not, if not a little bit earlier. Now we can talk a little bit about some of the reasons why and why we think um, this is occurring and, and then even the relative positions around US and, and Euro, but you can see again, the economies even going forward, there is a difference between their performance and what they'll be able to do and, and how they're gonna be able to perform going forward. Misha, I'll, I'll, I'll take a pause right now just to, just to see if there's anything that. Um, yeah. Uh... There were some questions about how trustworthy these some of these numbers might be coming out of China, especially. Um, and there are some other questions going on. So, okay, has Vanguard modeled a double dip recession, for example? Uh, how 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 long will that recovery take? Yeah, etc. So so this is this is a great great question. Um, this idea of trustworthy and, and confidence in in the, in um in the numbers that are coming out of China. And, and, I, and I think that that's one of the elements around when you think about international investing, like how transparent, how authentic, how, how you know, accurate is the data and can we have true confidence in it? And I'll answer it, I'll answer it actually in, in two ways. Uh, one is that I'm not sure if everyone on the call actually knows that Vanguard has an office in, 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 uh, in Hong Kong and, in, and in, in Asia where we are functioning as a, as, as a, as a full on business there. Um, and here's, here's the point to note. About three weeks ago, we had a, um, a call with our, 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 our chief economist, Joe Davis. Uh, we also had our economist, um, Chen Wang, who is in Hong Kong. And then we have um, another economist that's in, that's in Europe. Out of, out of the three economists uh, that we had on there, only in Hong Kong are they actually back to business. They're back in the office actually functioning as a, as a business. So this, this is a little bit of a distinction between the US and, and, and what might be happening in, in Asia. So that's kind of one element of, there's a, there's a bit of a, a, a testing of it to say, well, what's actually happening on the ground relative to the numbers that they're reporting. Now, is this all of China? Is this, is, is this the entire um, uh, uh, region? The answer would be no, but I would tell you that, that my second, second element of this is that um, when I, traveled and worked in Hong Kong and in China, uh, this is around 2004. So this is slightly after um, um, SARS um, that, that they had. And it was a very interesting thing that I, I, I think just from a cultural standpoint, I didn't truly understand or, or appreciate. And it, was, and it was this, it was that when someone, you know, felt sick or anything of that nature, they often work really, you know, quickly to, to, to wear a mask and, and to, you know, kind of, and, and, and this is whether it was something really serious or if it was a light mild cold, if you felt like that, that was the case. And, and, I, and I say that is because it's kind of, it's a little bit indoctrinated from their previous experience, but also it's just a part of what they have learned over time. And I think that that bolds a little bit more into the confidence levels. It's not to say that um, you know, they don't, they're not going to have their troubles or, or struggles is to say that there's some history that they've kind of learned and experienced. And, and when it comes to GDP numbers, uh, 
Vanguard's very confident in our statistical model, which is uh, a proprietary model that gives us a 10-year outlook. We're very confident in the actual numbers when it comes to the GDP and economic outlook. But just from a, a broader cultural kind of perspective, I wanted to highlight just kind of two experiences that kind of validate a little bit of what we're, what, what we're seeing in, in the numbers on these charts. Um, so this is a this is a really interesting one, and, and I actually added this one around this index of general uncertainty. Uh, it's more of a global phenomenon that we're dealing with versus just maybe a country or just a region phenomena. But the, the the major point that I would I would like to highlight here is that the level of uncertainty has truly. Um, escalated beyond anything that we've seen in, in recent history. So to that, to that point, that's, that's gonna drive a definitely um, what, what I would say anxiety around where do, where do I go and what do I do, especially when it comes to uh, investing, um, more broadly, you kind of think about it on a day-to-day -day basis. You, you just even think about like, we're right now just before, you know, this Thanksgiving and the question of like, what do I do and how do I do it? This level of just general uncertainty and levels of decisions just drive the anxiety, whether it's through um, our day-to-day -day decisions, but even more broadly international. And then I can think, you know, you start thinking about just broader geopolitical uh, issues. It just feels like there's just more uncertainty and anxiety that, that, that's, that's, just residing more, more, more naturally. So if, you, if you're feeling the uncertainty, the, the, the issue here is just highlights that it's, it's more persistent and more global than, than we've, we've, we've ever experienced. And this, this, this chart kind of just highlights that, 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 that broader point. I thought it was important to, 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 to raise this point because when you think about where we are um, in the middle of, of, of the crisis um, and the pandemic, this is a part of what's fueling, you know, general decisions that a lot of people might be making, whether it's relative to international or domestic. Um, this is a part of that anxiety that 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 resides there. So, I just wanted to make, you know, just just make a a comment just around that 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 general driver. Okay, so um, a few things I think that are important to help continue to set the, um, the, the, the broader prospect is just around global and, and, and macro economic outlook. There, there's, a, there's a couple of things that I think are, are, are very important um, to note. And one would be just the variation around sector uh, variation. So you think about certain sectors have been able to recover versus not so uh, where there's social distancing and whether it's um, certain parts around manufacturing or construction, this works and this is starting to come back where there's not more retail face-to-face, -face, there's struggles. But what that means globally is that if you start looking at the dynamics of, 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 a, of, a, of, a, of a region, um, you can see that there's diversification uh, differences in magnitude of, of those representation uh, segments within, uh, within the world. Um, what, do I, what do I mean by that? You can look at US being more tech driven uh, versus um, China, for instance, uh, potentially being more uh, finance or, or, or manufacturer driven. Um, so you can see that these recoveries and, and, and how the, the markets are going to recover uh, gives some, some, some credence to pay what's happening at the, uh, at the sector, sector level. Uh, the second broader piece is that we, we definitely believe that there will be broader loosening and continued loosening of monetary policy. Um, there's going to be definitely effects, especially around all of the, the borrowing, but what we are willing what we're willing to you know, um, um, state is that um, in, in line with the Fed is that loose monetary policy will continue for the foreseeable future. Um, that, that leads into 2021, potentially 2022. Um, but just as that accommodation, uh, Vanguard's broader view definitely um, sets, sets well there. And then this idea um, finally around like consumer price uh, inflation will potentially just remain weak on an ongoing basis. So those that have some anxiety about all of this pent up demand and then the, the return after this pent up demand is like, it's gonna pour and then we're gonna see this explosion of, of inflation. Um, a couple of things we, we, we think are, are gonna be, um, uh, how, would, how would I say, um, uh, headwinds for that. One is just the, just the continuation of technology. 
Um, but 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 two, we don't believe that all of the pent up demand. I, we believe that it, it'll be a, a much slower and more gradual uh, uh, closing there. Um, Manisha, I see you're 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 on. You you have a highlight a few things. Uh, no. Um, okay. I, I actually, on the previous slide, there was maybe you can clarify one thing. What does uncertainty measure? Uh, it's a question from Jim. Yes, um, great, 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 great question. So un, un, uncertainty, um, actually, from a, a, a broader perspective, is it's it's more questionnaire and it's more of this idea of of um, how would I? What's the best way to kind of put this? Um, 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 here, so this this will probably be the better way. Um, it, it it actually just me measures this idea of investment and and taking potential you know specific actions. This this idea of like are we seeing more um, holding out of investments versus coming into investments is is really the the broader kind of metric behind 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 the general uncertainty. Thank you. So a, a couple of things I, I want to highlight here, which I think will be um, really important for us, is just around equity markets and what are what's Vanguard's broader projections. Um, a couple of things that we we, we believe, um, as you can see, around um, how we go about um, measuring returns and especially around certain standard deviations and, and where the mean. What we are seeing is that international, we believe, going forward on a ten-year outlook will um, you know, have, have, have a strong propensity to outperform uh, domestic. Um, from, a, um, from a projection standpoint, we see that the US um, will, will actually land somewhere between uh, four and 6% uh, returns. And then uh, for international, uh, we're looking at anywhere between seven and 9%. Um, some of the drivers be behind that is definitely around um, um, what we believe to be um, um, valuations uh, and the corrections of valuations and, and just more broadly that upside um, that we're seeing from the international perspective is how, is how we're kind of forecasting that range around, you know, outcomes for, for um, from U.S. versus the versus international. And this this really speaks to um, some, some significant points of it. If you can just um, Take a look at just from the from the well. Just start on starting on the left. You look at there is um, um, what we call the uh, general the, the 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 PE ratios and, and ratios that exist. They're like price to earning, and one of the uh, the elements that we think are are helping to um, explain a little bit on on why we believe the the market is fairly valued is largely due to just low interest rates and we can talk a little bit more about that as as as, as we move forward but when you think about um this exactly the, the exact same thing jumping over to the next chart on international versus us uh this valuation uh levels we're, we're seeing that there's a slightly benefit to uh, lower valuations in, in the in international, which gives uh, some credence to the uh, to the upside, and, um, and and really kind of explaining a little bit why we, um, we have, why we have the projections that uh, international you know is 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 likely to um, in in a ten year perspective to provide um, um, better returns than 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 what the U.S. Now I can I can probably feel the the tension is that many people. Uh, we've been saying this for ten years, right? And um, and is this truly uh, um, this time? This is this time different. But like like I said, I, I think you know more broadly, we we just have this ten year outlook that 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 these things will will hold true between um, U.S. and 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 domestic um, markets. Um, and we can, like I said, we can talk a little bit more as as we kind of move forward. So, Paul. Yeah. Uh, so uh, on, on your previous slide on expected returns, there was a question. So on the seven to 9% expected returns from international investments, is this for is the rest of the world or is this for a particular geographical region or industry? Oh, great, great, great question. So we, we believe this is for more broadly for the rest of the world. So we would do US and international. So this is, this is more broadly. Um, I, I, I think if you look at the market cap, you know, um, 
you know, especially if you look at Asia um, and the difference between Asia and Europe, you're probably going to see some 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 different variations around what we believe to be outcomes there. Um, probably with Asia, you know, having more outperformance than what we would see from a from a European perspective. But for this particular chart, this is everything X uh, US. Great, thank you. And. Uh, there was previously a question from Mel Turner that I was holding on to, but maybe you can address it either now or in maybe in the next few minutes uh, as, as you go along in your slides. And this is a question from Mel, which is, you know, you started to talk about the increased ret returns from international investing potentially. So the question is, should, should your main reason for investing international be for returns or for lack of domestic correlation? This is a, gr this is a great question. And, um, I'll, I'll hit on a little bit of it now, and then I think there's a few there's a few slides that um, that we would um, that we can that'll that'll give a little bit more 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 clarity uh, on that. So um, the first thing is that um, the point around lack of correlation. Um, there's there there's there's data and points that would say. Um, Maybe pre 1995, if you will, you know, and I'm you know, stretching it back a little bit, but you would have seen correlations, um, uh, you know, probably in the you know 0.5 uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, range. But since 1995, the correlation has been literally increasing, you know, year on year. Um, and and this speaks to a little bit of um, why people might, you know have struggles with investing international. Um, right now, the correlation can is, is, is really as high as 0.8. Uh, perfect correlation is one, I think you, you guys know, know that. Um, but the correlations have been, have been driving up, but we can see that there is, there is there's still diversification benefits. So a part of the answer is that there is diversification benefits and two markets can actually provide exposures to two different kind of conditions. And even, and even if you consider the previous slides around GDP um, and, and, and outlooks, you're gonna see that not only uh, regions will perform different at different times, um, but also the makeup of those regions will also be different. So there is uh, inherent uh, diversification that we believe is truly beneficial so that um, at some points and, and at different times, um, both of these markets can be, uh, one can underperform, the other one can be uh, 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 overperforming. So you can, you can experience that diversification benefit. But what we also believe is that, you know, when we're, our, our general projections is that because of valuations, we believe that international has more, more upside. So there is, there, the answer is a little bit of, of, of both, and it's not just either, either, either or, but that's a, that, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, which, um, this is a, this is a very interesting uh, uh, slide here, just that, that, that the crisis has shown some 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 general differences uh, between um, the, the the various regions, and if you can you know take a look and just you know absorb a little bit of that 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 difference, and probably what I would um, what I would note is how you can see the differences from China to various literally all the other um, developed markets. And, 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 and their overall you know, equity performance that, they, that they've um, illustrated. And, and, and this is really in time of deep distress, right? So um, from the, 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 the blue part where, you know, when people think about, hey, what's the downside to international in, investing? I, I believe that might've been one of the questions. Well, downside or, or, or what's, 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 what's gonna be painful about it is really around um, um, variation. And this idea of you know um, how much can a particular security go down versus how much a particular security can go up, and when you look at when you look at this, I, I think what you can see is that there's sometimes there's exposures, and this one is 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 more probably related to um, just recent events and how the crisis might be handled versus more broadly. But what you are able to see is that how does different regions perform. Uh, under certain stressful um, and 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 we we can probably say extremely uh, stressful events or continued uh, stressful events and 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 this is a, another element of why like 
global diversification can, can really have uh, some value in your portfolio. And, and the idea really behind it is that, you know, actually it's like, how do you uh, reduce the, 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 the risk that's in your portfolio and international definitely can, can, can help, you, help you do that. And we will get to a, a couple of points that we'll talk about, well, well how much and, and, and some of the more nuanced questions uh, around that. Paul, one clarification on, on the investment returns as well as these numbers that you're showing here. Are these uh, dollar adjusted? Are they currency ad adjusted or are, are they native uh, currency returns when you talk about all, in all of these slides? Oh, in all of the slides. Um, these are these are actually dollar adjusted slides, so they, they they're not native to their um, to, to to the to the um, to the foreign currencies, which can lead to that, that's that's that, that's another good point around just foreign currency that we can we can we can definitely talk about. Thank you. Okay. So in investing investing globally, uh, when you when you look at this. Um, this number here that we have here is around 2015. Um, the number as of as of this year and, and, and probably even closer to um, uh, this month is, is more around 55% um, when it comes to US representation um, um, versus this uh, 53 uh, that we have here. But the idea around investing globally is, is, it, is it too big to actually just ignore, right? Um, is, is, this, is this representation, if you start out with a, a basic market cap um, um, globally, um, you're essentially missing out, you know, upwards of in here, this case, you know, 40, 47, 45% of, uh, of the global uh, market that, that's out there. And that representation um, is, is, is a question you have to really kind of uh, resonate with. And, and part of this is that what's represented in the 47% that you potentially could be missing out on versus um, um, just staying US domestic. Um, there, there, there is a, there, there's a couple of stats on home country bias that I think it's important to, uh, to, to kind of note is that the typical US investor, they have about one and a half um, 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 overweight in U.S. In, in their in their home market. So if it's 53%, they, they typically will have one and a half times that weight in their overall portfolio. So the, the there is there's some international exposure, but it, it they definitely overweight the U.S. Uh, and and the likes also go for international investors. So if I was a Canadian investor, it would represent that I would have a much smaller percentage of my portfolio being local. Um, and a significantly larger percent that would be towards the U.S. Um, but those biases also exist both domestic and international. But, you know, the, the, like I said, the question that we can highlight a little bit is that, hey, what's in the, in the 47 that, that, that really could be uh, um, something that I could be missing or, and, a, and a diversifier away from what it is that, you know, it is that you have in your portfolio. And that bleeds a little bit to the, uh, to the chart below. If you look at the chart below and you can kind of see the, the various sectors um, um, more broadly, you can, you, can, you can clearly kind of see uh, between US and international, the weighting and why, and, and again, why diversification would, would drive through in that, 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 that piece. And between, definitely between US and, and just the rest of, of, of the world. It's like, they're, they're not equally, um, equally weighted just across the, across the board. This one just really kind of highlights some of that, that, that diversification there. Paul, well, uh, one, one sort of question here. So when we talk about the long-term, I know previous slides mentioned uh, outlook mm. over the next 10 years. Mm. Uh, now, when we talk about the long-term, what should we be thinking about in, 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 in the long-term in, in general, right? So like you said, the last 10 years haven't been very good for the rest of the world. Uh, when we look forward, should we be looking at you know, 10 years, 20 years, what's, what sort of time horizon should we be thinking about when we start think about diversifying internationally? Yeah, so I, I, would, I would say there's a few things and I, I wanna be really, really kind of thoughtful uh, about that. Um, one, I, I think you have to be incredibly aware of where you are in your, um, 
where you are in your investment life, if you will. Are you an accumulator at this time, an early accumulator? Are you uh, in, the, in, in the final stages or approaching retirement or in retirement? And, and here's an easy tip and a, and a, and a kind of a, a point that you can make. Um, and and I'm, I'm not sure if everyone's heard of like target retirement date funds, right? Uh, but these are funds that actually, um, actually manage the asset allocation over time uh, by professional managers to help uh, an, an investor, uh, if, if you will, calibrate their, um, their risk and returns relative to where they are in their accumulation to retirement stage. And, and why, do I, why do I bring this up? Is that that can be a model. So Vanguard has them, um, um, Fidelity, like any company has them. You have to think about like more broadly, where is your kind of ideal retirement and look at the allocations that are underneath. You can, you can actually see that, right? And, and to me, this is an important point because to state that, hey, what's the time horizon I should be looking at? It kind of depends. Because um, can, you can easily see that in an international space that adding that, that additional risk when you to retirement, it may not be you know, the most prudent thing that you would, you would want to do. But when Vanguard says what's long-term, uh, how we're thinking about it is really in 10 year increments, right? So if you are, um, I, I, I would say if, if you're 10 years away from um, retirement, you, you can, this idea of what you add into your, at your allocation um, is, is something where international can be definitely, uh, definitely considered. Now Vanguard has a, has a view on, on that. And, um, and to be honest, I, I, you know, and, and thinking about it a, a little bit clearer, even in the, um, the three, three fund portfolio, Taylor mentions, you know, a particular um, uh, uh, percentage around this allocation. And, and, and I, I believe that this long-term view of 10 years is, is really important. And uh, he, he definitely says, hey, at, at maximum 20%. And the, the, the counter to that and the investment um, strategy for, for Vanguard is saying, hey, at minimum, 20%. And, 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 and I think that these two sides give you a, a little bit of a, of a view on what it, what, it, what it might mean to add some to your portfolio. But for sure, 10 years, I, I would be very thoughtful about that. Um, is it necessary to have... Um, um, international, if you're well into your retirement years, you know, look, there, there's going to be more volatility that that'll, that'll play in and you have to think about your own particular risk, risk tolerance. So hopefully that, that answered the question there. Okay. All right. So, um, moving on, looking at it a little bit more. So this is, this gets back to, I, I believe an earlier question around, uh, volatility and, and and what we call what we mean by long term this idea of ten years um, global volatility is actually lower uh, outside the U S than it is within the U S um, so this idea of this additional global you know um, broadly diversify and and how do you reduce volatility in your portfolio this is this is where uh, uh, broadly the, the 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 case is that. It, it makes some sense if you're if you're concerned about you know um, internationally um, is there going to be transparency uh, are are, the, are we actually getting you know valid numbers the the, the 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 proof here is that from a from a data uh, uh, perspective that volatility on a broadly diversified portfolio X U S or outside the U S is going to um, is going to lend to re and a reduction in volatility in your portfolio um, versus what some might believe is like, hey, it's just more volatile. And, and note that this is a broadly diversified portfolio when you're talking about XUS, you're talking about Europe, you're talking about Asia um, and, 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 and the likes, which, are, which will be more broadly or even. Okay. All um, and so, so, so this is this is really just a statistical example, and, and really highlighting, hey, what's what's Vanguard's belief in in the um, in, in broadly investing international, and and this is a representation of what your equity only side of the portfolio is, right? So, um, this idea of taking, if I'm just at a a 50-50 
uh, portfolio. Um, Vanguard now talks about like, hey, what's the what's the percentage of that fifty percent uh, of my portfolio should be allocated between U.S. and and domestic. So these numbers are not for your entire portfolio, but just the this the equity position, and and where we see that the diversification and the, and and the risk uh, reduction. Um, starting at 20% and and essentially because uh, I actually the, the, to actually our, our our latest recommendations is really between uh, 30 and 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 50 percent uh, where we see the value so we've actually uh, suggested higher allocations than what this chart would would would, would even um, illustrate here as as the benefit to um, to driving down that that risk in your portfolio when it when it comes to um, when it comes to the, just a just a just a um, the variation and the variability that might appear in your portfolio. Um, and I, I, I believe this is the, uh, the, the the final slide, and we can definitely get to um, you know some of the some of the specific questions. Um, and and I have actually two slides here, but if you if you look at this, this really just is showing you this idea between domestic and international when it's outperforming, when it's not outperforming, and 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 really even highlighting some of the difficulties that that might exist to actually trying to predict when it's going to happen. Um, because, you know, I, I think the idea is like, even, even in a domestic market, we take the same strategy that we don't know which sectors are going to outperform. Um, we know that some will do well. They're just like, for instance, now you, you think about tech really storming through. We don't time the market and try to figure it out. We say, just buy the market. Uh, and this same, this same idea and this same, you know, financial concept, uh, you know, is, 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 exists globally as well. So the difficulty of trying to say when it's the best time, uh, the idea of one, can you access the general international market at, at, at reasonable prices? And do you have confidence in, 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 the, in the management of, of that uh, particular fund that you might be selecting? So there's an idea that that you know um, some active uh, international investing might have some more possibilities, but of course, again, Vanguard we, we believe just in, in the, the general uh, the general outlook. And and this is just more recent, which gives you kind of a, a month on month look. And and mind you, the um, the the slide kind of flips. So if the last slide domestic was on the top, domestic's on the bottom this time. If you can't read it, they're they're a little bit. Uh, light there. But um, I just, just wanted to show you, just think you can see again, just the, the variability and how difficult it is to, to time in and time out of the, of, of the, of the market. <laughs>